All right. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you guys for taking this time to come join me uh, during your lunch break. And thank you for not being scared off by the fact I put the word Paxos in the title of this talk. Um, I, ho I hope to go easy on you in the next 20 minutes and hopefully there'll be time for questions as well. So today I'm going to be talking to you about how we can reach consensus. Fortunately, I'm not talking about consensus in politics or consensus within companies, but consensus within distributed systems. Consensus is incredibly important. Once we can achieve consensus, we can build reliable distributed systems, despite the fact that the underlying components that we're using are deeply unreliable. Anyone who's worked with distributed systems will know that that's the reality. Things fail. When you send a message, it may get there, it may not, we don't know. So, if you've ever built, used, deployed, broken, tested, fixed a distributed system, you'll be familiar with these kind of things. This is the dream of distributed systems. This is what we'd love to have. We'd love to have our systems be responsive and consistent, for them to be reliable, high availability systems that are low latency and have high throughput. These are all great things and we'd absolutely love to have them. But this is just a mirage. Oh, sorry. Uh, instead of all these buzzwords, what we can just say is that we want the system to act the way we want it to do it, when we want it to, and to do that quickly and performantly. But to be realistic, we know that we have to compromise. Decades of research in academia and experience in industry has told us that you cannot have your cake and eat it when it comes to distributed systems. You're going to have to make sacrifices and compromises even though compromising is never fun. We have things like the CAP theorem that say that you can't have consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. Or the FLP result that says that we can't guarantee that we can reach consensus if the system is asynchronous and failures can occur, which is, you know, real systems. In fact, there's so many things we can't do that Nancy Lynch wrote this paper, 100 impossibility results in distributed computing. A hundred, that's a lot of things that we can provably not do. So what is it that we actually have in practice? Here is a, a tiny subset of systems from the open source space, which many of you will be familiar with. There are systems here that provide us with consensus. These are raft systems like Zookeeper, uh, sorry, like Log Cabin and etcd, and raft-based systems like uh, Console and systems like Zookeeper. And then there's a whole bunch of other systems on here that make use of these systems and build upon them. Consensus is absolutely critical to these systems which rely on the safety guarantees that they make. And generally, we're really happy that we have these systems and we're just grateful that they solve the problem. But the reality is that they aren't that, they are quite limited when it in comes to practice. Usually when we're deploying consensus, we deploy them across three nodes or we deploy them across five nodes, or if you're being really, really adventurous, maybe seven nodes. But the practical reality is these systems just don't scale beyond that. And these systems are slow. These systems use majority agreement. That's a lot of communication every time you want to do anything. And we've done all this work to make our systems fault tolerant. But the reality is, and I spoke to all sorts of people who deploy these systems in practice, they're often unavailable. The master or the leader in the system becomes a central point of failure. Even though we can, in theory, ultimately recover from failures, um, this may take a long time in practice. And there's all sorts of other failures like network partitions that aren't handled well. Now we've been told that these are fundamental issues, that because this is distributed systems, these are just the reality. This is what you have to have. There's nothing more you can do about it. But today, I want to tell you that that isn't the case, that the problem is with the approach to the problem, the, the approach that we're taking to this problem, not intrinsic to the problem itself. This is the infamous part-time parliament paper by Leslie Lamport. It's widely cited, often discussed, and poorly understood. And I don't recommend you read it. It's really a terrible read. Uh, I'd give it one star. Uh, <laughs> high influence, but very, very painful. Um, 
So all of these systems, whether you're talking about Raft or you're talking about Zookeeper, they basically take their approach from this fundamental paper. This paper's really shaped how we think about distributed consensus and agreement for decades. But what I'm here to tell you today is a little bit surprising. And if you only remember one thing, remember this. Majority agreement is not necessary for a distributed consensus. Now this may seem counterintuitive and goes against what you would have been taught in grad school um, and what you read on blog posts, but the reality is that we don't actually need majorities. This work has been published and formally proven, and today I'm gonna share it with you. So, what actually is Paxos in the first place? So I'm gonna talk about this on a really, really high level because we're quite short of time today. But basically, we want to reach agreement over a sequence of operations. I'm literally just going to use shapes, but you can imagine that these are transactions to a database or updates to a key value store. And the solution to this is if we're a group of participants and we want to achieve this, we're going to select someone. They're going to say, hey, I want to be in charge. Make me in charge. I'm going to be the leader, the master, the primary, whatever you want to call it. Um, and the majority of people will back me up on that and then I'm gonna make decisions about what's gonna happen, and I'm gonna back that up to the majority of people. So it's a two-phase protocol using majorities in both phases. And we call the kind of normal steady state of the system the replication phase, so we're just replicating data, replicating these operations. And when failures occur, we call this the recovery phase. And the replication phase looks a bit like this. So we have a system of five nodes. One of them is the leader and the other four are just general members. And we've got our sequence of operations just represented as a triangle and a diamond. The leader would like to add a new operation. So they tell everybody, add the new operation. Once the majority of people have got a copy of that operation, they consider it agreed, consensus has been reached, and they'll tell everybody that, it, that it's job done. Flexible Paxos makes one small change to this. We, going back to the original slide where we were talking about majorities, we've replaced majorities with uh, what's here in orange, recovery quorums and replication quorums. When you see the word quorum, just think a group. It's just a subset of participants. And we're gonna use one for when we're doing our replication and one for when we're doing our recovery. So safety is absolutely vital in these kind of systems. That's why we're using them in the first place. And the important safety criteria here is that once we agree something, so for example, when we put that circle in that third slot, we must never forget that we've done that. We can't suddenly start putting squares and triangles in there. It's a circle and it's gotta stay like that. And the way that we achieve this is by ensuring that that group that we use for replication, the quorum, and the group that we use for recovery overlap and majorities are something that satisfy that requirement the important thing here is that is the only requirement the uh, original formulation of paxos by leslie lamport required that all quorums intersect and therefore people use majorities but the reality is this is all you need so i'm going to talk a little bit about how we can actually use this result in practice so the systems that we have at the moment, they use majorities. So that's why we tend to deploy them across three nodes or five nodes. And so in a system of five nodes, we need three nodes to agree to uh, reach consensus. And you can see an example of this here. This is easy to reason about. If a minority fail, we can carry on. If a majority fail, we can't. Uh, but this is quite limited. We can't scale this system up. And the problem with it as well that I've put here is it's symmetric. So that basically means that whether you're recovering from a failure or replicating something, you're, putting it, you're giving it the same cost, you're doing the same amount of work. But the reality is that replication is really common. You do hundreds of thousands of requests replicated and then you have a failure, recover, and then you do loads of replication again. So replication is really common, recovery is rare, but we're treating them symmetrically. So the first thing we can do to imply this result is to switch from strict majorities to non-strict majorities. So here, if you happen to have an even number of uh, machines that you're working with, you can deploy, uh, you can reach replication just talking to exactly half of them. 
And when it comes to when you're doing recovery, you can use the normal majorities that you would have used before. This is just better than what we were doing before. There is no downside to this. You've just reduced a quorum, um, and that's more fault tolerant, faster, etc. But we can push this even further. As long as we maintain this requirement that the quorum we're using for replication intersect with the quorum we're using for recovery, we can try all sorts of different systems. Here's another system, for example. The replication quorum that we're using here is any two nodes in a system of six in the top row, and then we use five nodes when it comes to recovery. So what we've done is we've basically made the steady state, or the thing that we're doing most of the time, less expensive, and put more work into the recovery state. And you can see this again for eight nodes. You can come up with any system you like as long as you can maintain this property that recovery quorums will intersect with replication quorums. The issue with that though was that we were getting really big quorums when we were doing recovery. So here's another system that we could use. We can organize our nodes into a grid. So we've got a, a three by three grid on the top row here. And we can say, right, for, for replication, let's just use a column. And for recovery, let's use a row. And that way we know there's always going to be an intersection. Here we have nine nodes, but we're only ever using three of them. This allows us to get a much higher throughput as the system is now beginning to truly scale. And we can go even further. We can split nodes into groups, which you could then uh, distribute across multiple data centers and then say that when you're doing a replication, you want to get one node in each group to agree with you. And when you're doing a recovery, you get all of the participants of one group. And we know that this, again, will always intersect. So I don't have very long to speak to you today. But what I want to say is that you, don't, it's not, you shouldn't give up on strong consistency and on consensus. It doesn't have to be incredibly heavyweight. We can actually build really scalable, high-performance consensus algorithms. The stuff I've shown you today is a result from theory, but it applies across the board, whether you're using your own consensus system, whether you're using Zookeeper, whether you're using RAF, whether you're using Consult or etcd. It's orthogonal to any of these particular algorithms. There's a lot of potential to make use of this in practice. And if any of you are using this or do use this, I'd love to chat with you about it. So the takeaway message is the only intersection requirement for Paxos is between the replication quorum and the recovery quorum. Despite what decades of research and teaching have told us, we do not require that all quorums intersect. Thank you very much. If you'd like to get links for the paper and various blog posts where people better than me explain all this work, have a look at um, fpaxos.github.io, or you can get in touch with me by email or on Twitter. Thank you. We do have time for questions, if anybody has a question. The other mic there. Do you know of any of those popular systems that are going forward with this approach? Um, so I know that people have forked those systems. So I'm working with students and various people who have, who have forked the systems to implement it to see whether it's possible and to start evaluating it. I don't know that any of the mainstream uh, systems have decided they're going to switch to this for the long term. And this is, you know, this work changes how we think about systems. And I think it will be a while for people to, to adjust, a while for people to reason about safety and decide what performance trade-offs are really important to them. Um, but yeah, if you're maintainers of these systems, I'd love to chat about upstreaming these kind of changes. Thank you. Just to make sure I understand the consequence of this. So uh, this doesn't mean that a cap theorem is no longer true. It's, it just means that you can have higher availability, but you still cannot have CAP all the time, correct? So the, the cap theorem formulation is a, bit, uh, it's a bit misleading. I guess my claim is not that you can't have absolutely everything when it comes to distributed systems, but that you can have a lot more than you think. And that if you want to have strong consistency, you can actually achieve really good performance and really good scalability anyway.
Uh, hello, I think uh, it was a, a great talk. Uh, I just have a question on the, when you, by, what do you mean by being or, orthogonal to this, whether it's Raft or any other implementation? So even though the community is divided across various different algorithms, uh, underneath all of these algorithms are the same. They are all using Paxos. And so this work is about kind of modifying that underlying foundation and that applies therefore to all of these systems. So it doesn't matter if we're talking about view stamp replication or we're talking about Zookeeper, you can apply flexible Paxos to any of these. So by orthogonal, I just mean it's not specific to one thing. This isn't a raft optimization. This is an optimization to all of these consensus systems. Any other questions? We have time for one more question, I yeah. think. Last one. Okay. All cool. right. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.